So Victor Wembanyama the other night against the G League Ignite dropped 37 points in five blocks. Well, <clears throat> followed that up tonight with 36 points. Mm, not quite done yet. He also had 11 rebounds. Eh, not quite done yet either. Four assists. Mm, we're still not there. Four blocks. Now, it seems like finally mainstream YouTube, as far as NBA goes, mainstream NBA YouTube has finally caught on to the fact that Victor Wembanyama is one of the best and most talented prospects about to enter the NBA draft in at least a decade, man. I think really the only comparable player is Zion Williamson, but he didn't have... Zion had a ton of hype, but I guarantee you by the end of this season, he won't nearly have had as much hype as Victor Wembanyama. Vic is 7'6". Now, here's the thing. He moves like Kevin Durant, all right? Kevin Durant's 7 feet. I hate to tell you, although that's like a cool thing. Kevin Durant's definitely 7 feet tall. Now, Victor Wembanyama is honestly still growing, People like to compare Kevin Durant to random NBA prospects. The current one is Jabari Smith Jr. Now, while there are some comparisons just because of the stature, I understand it. But when I tell you Victor Wembanyama moves like one of the best scorers of all time, especially my generation, in Kevin Durant, I mean it. 7'6". You know, Jabari isn't 7'6". Players compared to Kevin Durant aren't 7'6". Victor Wembanyama moves his body. He contorts his body in a way I've actually never seen ever before in my entire life. The only comparable player to a guy like Victor Wembanyama coming from overseas, or sorry, just coming into the NBA draft in general, I think is Zion Williamson. The hype doesn't seem as much as LeBron James, although, you know, Vic's team's still in preseason basketball right now. There's still a whole season to go, so, you know, we'll let that, we'll, we'll see, we'll see how that goes. We'll let that marinate with a little bit of time. I think the only comparable player is you know, maybe Anthony Davis, but more so Zion Williamson. So I'm a huge Duke bandwagon basketball fan. When Zion first came into the league, and in his entire freshman year of college at Duke University, he had all eyes on him. Every single night, dra draft guys, you know, NBA scouts, just NBA fans, like everybody was watching Zion Williamson on a night-in, night-out basis towards the end of his season in his freshman year. And this is college. Now, keep in mind, watching Vic... It's going to be a lot harder than watching Zion Williamson play basketball. Different time zones, different streaming, different television, just different everything. I have never... I watch a lot of basketball, man. I watch probably too much basketball. Victor Wembanyama is special. This is a generational talent. All it comes down to with Vic is can he stay healthy? That is quite literally it. He has it on offense. He has it on defense. Guys... <sighs> I've, first off, I've never met a person who's 7'6". I, I don't think I've ever met anybody who's 7 feet tall. Victor Wembanyama, even when he's doing a simple crossover, it's hard to show it without proof in video, which I probably should start doing a lot more of. I've started doing a lot more of. But the, you know, when Vic is doing a simple crossover, the way like he gets so low. The ball gets low, but his body gets so freaking low. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm 5'9", all right? I'm a short-ass dude in general. I'm a midget compared to Victor Wembanyama. I can't get that low, all right? I can't, like, I don't know how he gets that low. And the thing with being 7'6", is you can't be blocked. Nobody is blocking Victor Wembanyama. So even if he gets the ball in the corner and say the shot clock is going three, two, and Vic's got a hand in his face, maybe even two hands in his face, he's shooting over. He's shooting over. When Luka Doncic first came into the league, everybody kind of knew. You know, everybody kind of knew, all right, <laughs> Luka Doncic is a franchise piece, but can he be a winner in the NBA is the question. We know Luka is very good. I don't think a lot of people really understood how good Luka Doncic was and still is right now just a couple of years into the NBA. Like, Luka will win an MVP in the next five years 
undisputed. I don't care where he is. I don't care who he has on his team. Luka Doncic is that good where he will win you any basketball game. If you have Luka Doncic on your basketball team, you have a possibility of winning that game in any regard. It's the same thing going to be with Victor Wembanyama. Like I said, it really is going to come down to injuries. You just got to pack on more leg muscle. You know, when Vic takes his logo threes, and I'm talking several feet past the three-point line, you're thinking to yourself, first off, that's a crazy shot. Unless maybe you're Steph Curry, you know, maybe you're Damian Lillard, maybe you're Kyrie Irving, those might be the only three players where you see them take a shot near the logo and you're like, that, that's probably going in. Those are the only three players like that are actually possibly in that argument. Vic will pull up from anywhere. A 7'6 dude pulling up from anywhere. The thing with Vic is he's a sub-30% three-point shooter. And I'll tell you why. The reason why Victor Wembanyama is a less than 30% three, three-point shooter. First off, is he's very young. He's extremely young, right? He's about to enter the NBA draft in just a season from now. So we know he's also just extremely young, and you're, you're going to work on it. He's shown the possibility. He's shown the potential that he can lock down that deep shot. But it comes down to legs. And thankfully for Vic, he doesn't have the body type. I can't think of the word, the skeleton arc, where you're built like Chet. Where basically, you're just a skinny-ass twig, and you can't really grow a muscle. Think Kevin Durant, think Chet Holmgren. They can't really pack on muscle. They can't really even pack on weight. So Vic is different. He, is it like endomorphic? It's something, some nerd shit. I'm just kidding. Once Vic gets a little bit more weight, as he ages in this season, once he gets into the NBA and he continues to pack on mass, pack on muscle, that three-point shot will fall. Victor Wembanyama will be at worst, and this is being very, very generous and very lenient, he will be at worst in the NBA a 33% career three-point shooter. That, that is minimum. And for a 7-6 basketball player, or with that being said, any center in today's day and age, any center, if they're shooting 33% with at least three threes a night, if they're going one of three from downtown each night and you're 7-6, you're going to take that. It shows a lot of potential. It shows you have that capability. So once Vic gets just a little bit more leg mass, those threes will fall. Because all of Victor Wembanyama's misses are short. I'm telling you, generational talent, franchise altering. I saw somebody, there was some tweet today that saw, it said a GM viewed Victor Wembanyama as a possible, I think it was $500 million asset. That's how good Vic is. And I just want to let you guys know this because we talk about this on the show all the time. I go on Vic Rants all the time. Check that out. Link down below. Type in the NBA show, Will Upton. He will change a franchise. He might change the NBA with his impact. And we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see because he's very good. And now, especially with his 37 point performance followed with a 36 point performance and as he's about to be entered into the NBA draft in this upcoming draft you're going to hear his name a lot and teams are going to be tanking for him and I just wanted to get this video out before it gets a little too annoying maybe annoying is the wrong word but who cares that's it for today man hit the like button hit that sub button if you guys enjoy I post daily NBA videos all my links are down below let me know what you guys are think about Vic peace